What's going on, guys? Dane here, and welcome back to You Already Know, right? We got faux bees on the docket, and hear me out. We're going against an Endia who has no idea what's about to happen to him. You know, he's going to have to sign an NDA after this one if it goes awry. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have him looking like Madea at the end of this. A grown man in a dress. You know what I'm saying? A grown man in a dress. Uh, either way, man, Madea, look, man, he's a trendsetter. You know what I'm talking about? If it wasn't for Medea, I don't think RuPaul would have a career. I'm playing. Actually, I don't... Is there... If anyone is in that world, let me know if there's any correlation at all. To, like, the timeline there. You know what I mean? RuPaul, look, I actually... Like, here's the deal. Like, this is something as a, a straight white male that you get shamed for. I used to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. I loved that show. But I also love drama shows. Survivor is actually my, like, favorite like, television program of all time, period. It's just great. I mean, you know, like, we, we all remember uh, Rick Devins and what he did. You know what I'm saying? We all remember, um, you know, Mike getting second because he couldn't talk his way out of a paper bag. We all remember, um, what, what was the one that just happened? Uh, not the one that's happening right now, but the, the other one. Now, what, what, what's, uh, who won that one? Hold on a second. <laughs> the, the most recent one. What? I just, what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'm even trying to remember the finalists in that one. What the heck was that season, Doc? Did that season exist? I remember the dumb guy that wouldn't stop getting fish was there forever. But I mean, maybe not dumb. He I typecasted him when I first saw it. I don't know, man. Who the hell won that one? It wasn't Lindsay, but it was someone that was with Gabler. Gabler won. Never mind. He, he donated it to charity. Bro, we're playing Phobies today, and we we're supposed to be casting Major League Phobies. Uh, here we are, dog. Here we are. Um, you know, we got Baba Yaga in the mid lane. We have a lot of aggressive positioning out of Boomer here, who is just like, he's a positioning god. Boomer is one of the greatest positional units in the game. One key value, beautiful. Hammerhead, beautiful positioning god. So much HP. On a map like this, he's definitely going to be able to push people into fires, push people off of heels, off pressure points, into traps. He's a gorgeous unit. And Boomer, I mean, he's just wherever you want him to be. He doesn't do damage, so you never have to worry about, like, ah, I gotta get ready to cover someone's back. He's literally just, like, health where you want him. And a pull where you want him. Although, normally, with Boomer, I actually find myself loving his health pull more than his pull. It, it, with one key, he has so much HP, it's gorgeous, and Mildred comes out of the wazoo thinking it's time to play. Now, today, we're spotlighting this map. Tomorrow, we're going to spotlight a different map. And the next day, we're going to spotlight a different map. I want to show you guys how many ways you can actually play this game, right? I don't want you guys thinking, ah, there's one strat for every single map. I'm going to highlight three games today on this map. And I'm going to do the same thing for every single map on how you can absolutely blow people's minds that are higher level than you. And Dia is a much higher level than me uh, as far as key level and actual player level. Um, which is kind of the theme here, man. You know, I want to show you guys how to really play against people that have a lot of experience. And the key is to understand the game at a high enough level where you don't have to do stuff that they've seen before. You can do whatever the hell you want moment to moment. You don't need a formula. You don't need a blueprint. Um, and, you know, you can come from, you know, negative win rates to positive win rates against top players. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was a 63% win rate. I dropped down to 48% because of the problems we had been talking about as I came back to the game. And, uh, you know, we're back up to, like, 54%, which is great. Because I'm only playing against top players right now, which is, you know, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it may be, like, you know, there's, like, a hundred whales or something like that. I don't consider, like, whales top players. Like, if you have a lot of money invested in this, um, I'll never be able to know your skill level. Like, there's no way for me to judge it. So, like, I'm just going to go off people that are kind of, like, in, like, a reasonable position you know what I mean uh as far as you know gameplay goes because you know I don't think most sane people blow hundreds of dollars on video games like one video game you know what I mean like you could literally have like like it's like ps5 or a phobies pack you know what I mean um you know I got priorities unfortunately um it's hard to tell man it's hard to tell we do have smiley coming out we have hammer hammerhead flying in and I also I want to say like I've wailed in games right and when people are like ah like he spends money that's all of his skill I really make sure to grind less in games that I do big summoning packs real talk like I grind way less after I do it because I don't want the advantage I wanted the video um so I ended up like every time I do like one of those hundred like packs or whatever I really spend like a week off of even playing the game. To just, like, kind of, like, let it compensate, you know what I mean? Or at least somewhat. Or, like, I'll play more sporadically so I can keep getting footage. 
um, as like a, a tribute to the free to play players who are not in a position to spend a hundred dollars on microtransactions. I'm very anti microtransaction for power in any game, but I'm also only a competitive player, which is where I'm going to tell you guys right now, as you see this footage on your screen. Um, there's a new game coming out, right? Um, I'm going to put a link down below. It is not an affiliate link. I'm not getting money for it. Literally, it's the pre-registration page on Google Play. I don't have uh, iOS, or I'd put that there too. Um, there is a new SRPG dropping, it looks like. A tactical RPG dropping from the Mobile Legends Bang Bang team. I'm forgetting the name. It's like Warrior Realm or some crazy shit. It's beautiful, gorgeous. And if you like this game, you're going to be on the same page with that one. It looks wild. I'm going to be playing it is what I'm telling you. I'm literally, that's the only reason I'm telling you. You're going to, I'm going to be playing it, right? So if you guys want to play along in that one too, when it first comes out, uh, you know, like full global release, let me know. I was absolutely going to go uh, play, what's it going call it? Uh, Honkai Star Rail. Um, I ended up getting talked out of it by a community member, uh, like, and I'm pretty sure it was an accident on his part. Um, but the man really, he was like, you know, like, like I was like, yeah, like I'm, uh, and it's Kingsler, which I love Kingsler to death. This man's my homie, and I hope there's no hard feelings after this. I don't even know if he watches the videos anymore. Um, you know, we've been talking in Discord when I can. I just, God, I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time to communicate with everybody, like individually. When I, you know, it's tough. It's really tough, man. Um, like I spend my whole day uh, spending my whole day, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like I literally, I do not have downtime outside of sleep. I don't have downtime. I don't have hobbies anymore, man. And it sucks, but also like, it's kind of like fulfilling. So I don't really know if I should say it sucks. Um, but I was going to play Honkai Star Rail. I got talked out of it. I mean, it's a grind RPG at the end of the day. And like, I'm a gamer. Like I want a game that has like low time investment and you know, uh, just, or at least like a normal time investment. And even if there's whales, it, it that's less relevant. This game has whales. I just want it to be fun, playable, um, and also not take up my whole life to be a part of a video community because I don't have the time to invest to grind up insanely in a game like that. I just don't. You know, he he let me know. He was like, uh, uh, this is what he said to kind of like talk me out of it. And it's true is the like craziest part about it. It is true. Um most internet, like, like most people that like have a big channel are dedicating their lives to the internet. And I just can't, I can't do that. I can't dedicate my life to being on the internet all day. I just, I genuinely cannot, like I'm not in a position in life, uh, where it makes sense to me. You know what I mean? Um, I'm very blessed in life, but I'm only blessed as long as I keep doing what's keeping me blessed, you know what I mean? So, unfortunately, Honkai Star Rail, I'm going to have to skip out, and I'm going to have to stay true to the channel. I'm going to have to stay true to the content, and true to you guys, I'm going to bring a game that's brand new that I know you'll love, and that's why I'm bringing it up in the first place. Let's get back to Phobies, though. As we come on up and Quagmire out, my guy got destroyed. We completely introed this whole first battle. And the messed up part is, it was a crazy fight. I hope you guys really saw what went down just now. Um, this, that, I can't believe. I can't believe how good that fight was. And we literally just like tutorial texted our way through it. And like, didn't even worry about casting it. Let's cast the next one, without a doubt. But, yikes. India, I apologize. <laughs> I sincerely apologize for what just happened. You didn't deserve it. We all know you didn't deserve it. Uh, uh, go get him, kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go get him, kid. Um, let's go ahead and uh, dive into the next match. Now we're going against Xiong Huang. And now this man right here is not a higher level than me, but I can promise you after fighting him, I felt like he was a better player in his skill level. And you're going to see what I'm talking about. The last one was a crushing victory. This dude's much lower. He's like 20 levels lower than me as a player. Um, His key levels are a little bit, not horribly, a little representative of that. But the last person had level 12 to 14s just rocking out, ultra rares, and, you know, higher level, and it was a crushing win. This was just a regular win. This was a close game. This dude's nuts. Now, Kajong Hong over here, I want to put respect on the player. He is really making, like, free-to-play players and new players look good and really show off that, yes, you can succeed in this game if you're brand new to it, which is a beautiful thing. But we have Boomer up top. Uh, we do have full control over where we send uh, Snowball over here. We can send him down to the pressure point if we want to um, on the bottom. But it did just get taken. We can put him on the stim pad and take it back. But do we take the bait here? Here's the issue. With him having a two-key pull and the damage that could come out of it, are we willing to take bait here? What do you think happens here? 
sincerely. Does he go for full damage or does he go for the safe route? We could trade all day now that we already have positioning. We've already killed a void unit. We've already taken keys off the man. We have a very counterable Hevo, but we have nothing that counters him out on the board yet. As he comes for the cassowary's throat and leaves Snowball. Or is this Fahrenheit? Dog, I don't remember the dog's names. Dog? That's my dog. You guys remember that song? It's new, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's new-ish. Uh, either way, so I remember that song. I don't know what's wrong with my brain today, uh, but I'm here for it. So we're going to go ahead and move Venus Flytrap up into an aggressive position because that's what you do when you game, and you know what I'm saying? And we're going to be insane right now. And we're, I guess we're just going to fair. We're just gonna throw the dog to the wind for the cat kill to protect the jar. And we're going to position a bison in position to guard this jar without an incredible play out of a ray charge or somehow there is no way with that i guess the potato the, the ray charge couldn't even reach it potato wouldn't get the kill we have protected our jar we've thrown our dog away from more positioning but he did also get three keys of value for his life possibly more and who knows how valuable the positioning is in a game like this and how to, like, actually, like, you know, render that into your head. We are just running Bison up and murking Ray Chargles. Ray Chargles down that three movement catching him by surprise. And I think the damage potential catching him by surprise as well. That is a four key down or is he a five key? That is a beautiful advancement in our game as we make risky trades doing our best to see if we can keep this game in our favor Jung Hawk I don't know how to say his name and I feel incredibly racist even trying to say it and I'm trying to like actually pronounce it not in just like the Kid Jung Haug right like it, it sounds dumb trying to say it like white it sounds dumb trying to say it the way it should be pronounced because I have no idea how it should be pronounced and also I want to call him by name and be respectful so you can you can kind of see the position I'm in right now but at the end of the day the bison moves back we have the heels coming forward. We have, ooh, the bison making it straight back to Nurse Joy. We have, what is this positioning? Why is he there? What? He's looking for a backdoor approach to safely take bottom lane, and I'm kind of here for the play. It's a little bit dirty, my guy, as we put lightning rocks up top. We have our elemental chilling to double tap anybody that comes in. But what he doesn't know is this is not bluff positioning. There is still a trap on the ground. So this is an easy retake and a waste of a key for him as we probably have our Venus fly trap back up by this point. Or we'll have it next turn, and he's still, with us sitting on this heel, has no kill potential on Venus Flytrap. So then the question becomes, how do we hang? Well, there's a couple of ways you could do this right now. You know what I'm saying? It looks like we're going to go ahead and Lightning Rocks the robot. It looks like we're going to re-trap it, and we're just moving back. We're not even worried about taking it right now, which is probably a good play. Don't waste the key advantage we've been working so hard for for unnecessary map control. Right now, that map control is irrelevant. We are insanely ahead in pressure. So just maintain pressure for now. See if we can take one of these spots back. Now, this man up here is going to move himself into a position where he is looking for double taps. But it's very niche where we would have to stand for those double taps. We have full control if we do or don't while he stands there. So we're not worried about it. What we're really keeping an eye on is making sure he doesn't go up there and take that spot. We need to make sure he feels just within sniffing distance and just safe enough. What is happening? The bison goes up and back down in the V positioning of dreams and the potato. What is happening? This looks like a rough trade, doesn't it? We just shoved a lightning elemental forward. But we took out a range unit, and it was a three key. And believe it or not, Lightning Rocks, as great as he is, the health shield that he is with his like almost 2,000 HP, with his electricity attacks and his good base damage, with his pole and his void damage on the pole, he's still just a three key. That was a gorgeous trade, and the commitment required to take him out of this game, and the way it was chosen to be done safely without applying damage to the jar 
ends up completely overcommitting him on bottom. With the sniffing distance out of Mr. Plays Way Too Much, uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the movie called? I keep forgetting Space Jam. No, what, he's, probably, he's watched too much. He doesn't play Space Jam. He's watched too much Space Jam. He's not getting anything done. But we are going to go ahead and heal our man up and throw him on top and see if we can get Mr. Space Jam to come around. You know what I'm saying? Let's see if we can get him to come around. Let's see if we can get him to pop off. There it is right there. Two taps. Easy money. Easy money. We eat it. That's a 1,400 damage and a burn. Maybe 1,500. And a burn. Bison has more health than that. It's a calculated guise to make sure we maintain pressure, but we also still have the positioning advantage, and we still can get out of dodge, and we still have a healer out, which at this point has given us three keys of value back already, having used the heal twice. We have returned on our investment. We have not wasted this unit. We've gotten 1,200 health out of it. Let's see if we can get something out of it that's worth even more than that as Blastomatic steps right back onto the fire with no qualms about it, and Bison comes up for the self-sacrifice as six crucial keys were taken from the man for a seven key trade beautiful the venus flytrap comes down and goes right back up on a walk does that look like the venus flytrap returned and did it did he catch the first move or does he think there's a trap on the pad i don't know and he probably followed it in most cases he's gonna follow that but you never know at the end of the day we're gonna have to watch his positioning and see if he's afraid of it if not it's fine because he has no take potential up here as Crocodile comes up and Space Jam wanders his drunken dragon ass all the way over to the top side and he has taken two 1,200 damage in total while healing around 400 of it around the time of his next turn. But we got to make sure he doesn't get max value out of that as we double tap, we single tap the one that can't heal. We poison them both up. And we just take another pad and we maintain map control. We double tap the dragon. And Nurse Joy is safe to move as far forward as you've ever seen her. And if anybody thinks they're taking a health square, we can shove them with Captain Bull. Beautiful stuff. Matt Adore in the house. 500 heal. We're nerfing it with the dragon poison as we speak and the damage on the Venus flytrap is coming together as they move forward and take Blastomatic on with a lightning cat tail. The damage is real. He's breaking through. The selection of units is coming in clutch. And we're playing our brains out. We have not been able to break his line of scrimmage. We've just been trying to hold at the line of scrimmage as long as we humanly can. On God, the difficulty of making sure that we can make these trades happen cannot be lessened, cannot be overlooked, cannot be overstated or understated. It was incredible how tough it was to maintain position and to even think about how to maintain position out of the unit selection coming out, the positioning coming out. And at the end of the day, it came down to the wire. 24 out of 25. We still got one more match to do on this map. Let's see if we can make it a beauty, you know what I'm saying? Or Venus Flytrap came in clutch, Smiley came in clutch last time. What do you think we're going to do in the next one? Click or tap to reconnect pops up when you're literally watching your own videos as if there's something to click on. It thinks I'm idle right now because I'm trying to watch my footage. That needs to be fixed. Okay, well, either way. Um, you know, that definitely popped up in mine and I fixed it here. That was not part of this footage here. That's great. Um, either way, um, good game. <laughs> We're going against Clown Stronzo for the last one. My man has four keys in his pocket. I got six. We got 35 in the bank. How he's spending it. He spent his four keys on a one movement robot. <laughs> okay, listen, I understand. Break the wall. You can pop off on aggressive defense, bro. You should not be trying to play defense when you're the first to go. Um, excuse me? I literally have nothing to rush into. I have nothing to siege. What a rough first play, and I get it. You're setting up for success later, um, you you know. But I guess I don't get it because he moved it, and an alien goes up top. What is that? Look at the alien, bro. There's a fucking alien. He's using the space tactics out here. I'm with it, Jack. I'm with it. Now we're gonna go ahead and take top side this time around, and we have a lightning cat, aggressive advancing, and boomer in the bottom lane, and we are Baba Yaging <laughs> with the truest. Now. 
why is Baba Yaga here? Right? You might be asking such questions right now. Why would Baba Yaga be in the conversation? Why is he chilling? Why does he think it matters? Well, what the heck is going on? I'm going to have to put my laptop on power mode, apparently, because watching this back is like live rendering the game for some reason. Did you see that popping off? I have like really high settings on right now, so I hope you guys don't hear the fan on. Um, I have really high settings on when I record. Um, and this, you know, this laptop's ancient. So, what the heck was up with the choppiness? If the last footage was choppy, I swear to God I'm not redoing it, but I apologize. What was that? I just had to put power, I had to put the sport mode on, <clears throat> on an MSI laptop to run the footage back and record it. Do you guys know what kind of games we play? Either way, it, apparently, this isn't just a video. <laughs> it's interactive, I guess, so I get it. I almost wish it wasn't for my own sake, but that's just me. Um, that's a very niche request, and that is a complaint that is very petty. And I don't give a fuck, because, like, if we ain't complaining about the stuff that matters to us, then why are we even complaining? <laughs> like, don't complain about stuff that don't matter to you, right? Either way, Clobster comes out, and also don't change it, because I'm sure a lot of people like it that way. <laughs> but either way, I'm not like they would ever listen to me anyways. I've been trying to be an affiliate for so long, I don't give a fuck anymore. Um, I'm, I'm not quitting the game by any stretch. I just, like, you know, like, you know, point taken, point taken. Um... You know, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see if the the uh, Moonlight Games, is that the Moonlight Games? Uh, let's see if they uh, like us a little better over there. They might vibe with the real a little bit better than the Phobies team does, apparently. Like, it's 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 insulting, and, like, it is what it is. But, you know, at the same time, hey, look, <laughs> we're going to burn a man out, and we're actually going to put our man on fire. <laughs> um, It's a play, and we take positional control, and Smiley shoves himself straight in. That's beautiful. Smiley has poison, or I guess cursed permanently, an unhealable curse on the heal unit. He is their healer. He's a very expensive ultra rare, and he is perma cursed, and there's nothing he can do to fix it. As Fish Tank comes forward, as if we're going to stick around for him to do what he's trying to do. <laughs> we don't got to stick around. Smiley doesn't even do damage. And also, if he just, like, runs him into my heart, like, we'll kill him with something. You know what I mean? Uh, we're not low on health. He is. Uh, his heart is throbbing right now. And he gets a cursed chicken out. But it's okay. Nurse Joy comes out, and the Clobster is going to go ahead and catch a heal. Beautiful stuff. Now, why do I like Baba Yaga on this map so much? And why do I like Smiley on this map so much? And why do I like Fahrenheit, or I guess Snowball? I don't remember. So much. Um... I'll tell you exactly why. Snowball is a beautiful first turn unit, whether you're first or second, and even if they use one, because of the position of these, uh, you know, these stim pads, these these damage boosts, you know what I'm saying? He can move around the entire map, and he can actually go from a point to a point of interest every single turn, and he can do something after doing so every single turn. He has his fire and one movement to go to a location of interest no matter what. He's an incredibly important unit to make a big move on. He is a move unit, you know what I mean? You're going to make plays with him. That's what he's here for, and I'm here for him. I love the unit, period, on this map. Why do I like Smiley on this map? Well, because of the center fight. It is very difficult to fight into a Smiley without spamming robots in this game, and robots have some of the le least utility in this game outside of straight damage, and they also have an incredible damage counter, which is lightning, and I have an ultra-rare lightning unit, which helps. I also have the lantern, and everyone has erratic, you know what I mean, and lightning rocks. You can really force people to pull robots out and just use lightning rocks. Use you know use the snake if you can figure out how to work him because I hate him. I I don't hate him. I like him, but like I can't use him. I've never gotten a good use out of him once. Period. I just haven't. We get pulled. We get cursed. Um, look at the position on the Baba Yaga trap, though. Um, Clobster survives barely, and he's gonna retain a heal. Clobster is a god. Clearly, is what that means. Period. So that's why I like those two. Uh, Baba Yaga. Look, I just like traps in general, and Baba Yaga is such a disgusting trap unit. He is the most underrated unit in the game right now. And I say that because people don't think he's terrible. No one know. No one will admit how busted he is right now, though. He's in a position in this game where he is big broken. And he's just not being utilized right. He's not here to do damage with his basic attacks. He's here to be a trap unit, but he moves twice. He moves uh, two paces, and he can move twice, so he can. He has a long range of movement. Uh, he can move twice as fast as Unicorn. He can move twice as fast as uh, the Venus Flytrap, 
right? Uh, any of them, basically, except for the poison or the fight. Maybe not. Maybe not any of them. I don't know how all of them move because I barely have any phobies, dog. And I've spent $200, $300, $400 on this game. I barely have shit. This game's so expensive, it's hilarious. <laughs> Either way, I have one ultra rare than the jar. <laughs> and I already told you what happens when I spend, you know what I mean? But, like, it's crazy to me. Uh, the, like, how hard it is to get anything in this game. Um, which is why I'm, you know, like, it is what it is. Like, I've been trying. Um, I really pray, like, this game, like, like, I really pray this game can compete with a juggernaut in the, like, industry showing up. Uh, Mobile Legends Bang Bang is one of the biggest games on mobile, period. And the team makes just big game after big game. They got a lot of competition coming. I've been trying to give them the heads up and get them ready for it. Phobies, I, we have to do everything we can to protect it, guys. We have to do everything we can to protect it because it's got a long way to go. And there's something coming that's actually going to threaten it. Like, real talk. That's how it's going to be. When there's an SRPG to play, people are going to have to decide. And coming into this one, new sucks right now. Um, it's We got to protect this one with our lives, dogs. Real talk. I'm being real with y'all. Like, we got to. You know what I mean? If, if we just sit here and be idle and be like, it's like it's good enough to survive... Our favorite game right now might disappear, and I, w I don't want to let that happen. I love you guys, and I love this game too much. Um, so we got to be careful. Global launch is coming on that one. <laughs> Link down below. Not affiliate link. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, Bobby Yagi, he's OP. Uh, two range of movement, uh, two range of trap placement, and also two range AOE, you know, 50% damage around. Traps that do 600 damage. Also, he's a void unit that pulls and has like 2,000 HP and does like 500, 600 damage with his basic attack. He's a god-tier unit. He's so incredibly broken, people can't play against him at all. And I, I don't think anyone uses him, because no one sees him ever. But people cannot... Look, we have a trap unit that's actually going to destructively make his way to the heart rapid fire, and he can just start smacking it. There's no help here. <laughs> he doesn't have anything that's going to make it in time. I, that's why I like those three units here, but there's a lot of ways to play around them. The dragon is only coming out every so like all the time, because people are addicted to undead and void units. And that's kind of why you're looking at that, man. But three completely different matches, three completely different play styles, three completely different unit selections outside of those little cores. Uh, and even, I think one of them, we, did, we didn't use all of them in every game. And I think that's where it's at right now. I think they kind of rule it right now because people are addicted to the blue, like the blueprint. And the blueprint doesn't work. You know what I mean? That's what happens to people that follow the blueprint. Their chickens croak which is a horrible way to say it. I love you guys so much, and if you guys enjoyed it, please hit the like button. I'm trying my hardest out here to do something. What am I trying my hardest to do? My brain broke. You know, maybe I'm not trying at all. I love you guys so much. Peace out.